How are you feeling? This is the, it's the tail end of uh, what I assume was influenza. I had, uh, I should not have streamed on Thursday. That was, I was just there so I won't get fined, okay? I possibly shouldn't even have streamed on Wednesday. I could not have streamed on Friday. I could not have streamed on Saturday. Yesterday was the first day I did not have a fever since Tuesday or Wednesday, and I'm finally feeling better. But I'm honestly, I am mad at the influenza type A virus. We are in a total war experience with this, I don't know if you call it an organism. Viruses are, are not quite living, not quite not living. It's, it's sort of a confusing situation. You know how on site it is for, for influenza type A? I stopped spitting out the phlegm that I'm coughing. I'm swallowing that shit now. You know why? Because fuck you, bro. You wanted to be in my body so bad? Enjoy it. How do you like a liter and a half of hydrochloric acid sizzling your shit? How do you like having all the water sucked out of your ass in my large intestine, turning you into a fucking virus nugget, bro? How do you like getting turned into a little piece of poop and shot out in the toilet? You thought you infected me? You stepped into the trap. How does it feel to get digested by your own ambition? So no, I'm not spitting out my phlegm anymore. I'm turning this shit into like a Greek myth. It's the virus that is a fucking problem. Tell your friends, I'm erecting a pole outside of my house with one billion dead influenza type A virons stacked on top of it, a totem warning other viruses do not come this way. It did, I did get pretty sick though. <laughs> I did get pretty sick. You ever get um, so sick? This one's for the fellas. You ever get so sick that the head of your dick changes color? You go to take a piss or a, a poop and then you're like, since when are you gray, my man? That's a new one. It doesn't happen that often. You're like, what the fuck? You're supposed to be like kind of burgundy, a little, little purple. I'm like, I think I failed the damn litmus test as soon as it turns gray, man. It's like you get so sick, even your dick is dying. Purple? The, the head of it is a little... I don't know what color to describe it as. What would you describe it as? Salmon? It's probably more salmon than purple, I'll give you that. <laughs> is there any other place on your body that has the same skin as the head of your dick? That's like a one of one, right? Like, I don't know what the fuck they're doing with that. Oh, your lips, okay. Maybe your lips. I could see that. But they're not the same because your lips get chapped. As dehydrated as I've ever been, I've never experienced, you know, a chapped glands. I feel like that would, I would never be out of Gatorade ever again. I gotta rub some sour Skittles on my, on the head of my penis and test that theory. Hey, holding this cock, thanks for the gifted subscriptions, thank you. All I can say, I, I promise you, this is, the, the prophecy has come true. This is the inversion of last week. Last Wednesday, I felt like a fucking demon was plucking my brain from inside and slowly sapping the life out of me. Like my skin turned gray. Did you see that shit? I, I knew I had to take Friday off when Librarian posted the screenshot with me in the blanket and everyone's like, oh my God, he looks so cozy. And I'm looking like, is there a sign of life in his eyes? There's n there was no pink in my skin at all. My eyes were like so sunken in. People were like, you look great. <laughs> Has he, he's been doing his mewing practice. I'm like, <sighs> teeth chattering, 78 degrees in my office, teeth chattering. <laughs> Glad to see you're out of the hallucinations. Being sick is actually like so funny. It must have been Friday night. Uh, I still had a fever. I was taking like Tylenol flu, which was helping me not literally go to the hospital. Um, but I went to bed, I, I couldn't fight the tiredness. So I went to bed at like 8.45. 
I woke up and I was like, ah, oh, what a great sleep. It must be seven in the morning. I looked at my phone and it was uh, 1255 AM. And there's like two brains inside of my brain at this point. I'm like, one half of my brain is like, I can't sleep here. Something about this bed is making it so I can't sleep here. And the other half of my brain is like, you're sick. That's ridiculous. You should go to sleep in the bed. But I just, like, I trusted the crazy part of my brain that felt like a, a, a witch placed a, a curse on my bed. And I walked out of the bed. I went down to the couch, slept on the couch with that fucking pusheen blanket that only covers, like, 20% of my body with the lights on and a, a cold cloth on my head. Slept like a baby until like 8.15 in the morning. I trusted my, my fever brain and it, it worked for me. And the fucking worst part about it is that like the whole fever dream, you know what I had stuck in my head? Was the 38 second clip of 311's Tiny Desk Concert where they're playing down just for 16 hours. Have you ever made out in dark hallways? Just place the kiss that made your day, hey. I played a hit from your record collection. It's your mix. Congratulations. If I ever said I got a down, down, know that I want to do it. Like it's come back in. But here's the thing is that I think that it like melted in my brain and then I'm starting to rebuild it. And now I like 311. I was like, they're kind of, they're kind of cooking it, man. Give me the 311 tiny desk concert. Three dudes that have been you know, just making music for the, the love of it for like 40 years instead of the Justin Timberlake Tiny Desk concert where there's like 90 paid session musicians who are all like smiling and going, give me, give me three old dudes who are still in it for the passion, man. They're not session musicians. They're his band, brother. They're not in it. They didn't write the fucking song. Like, no, no disrespect. I'm not saying they're not getting a good gig. But they think the dude took 20 years of piano lessons so he could play the keyboard part on Senorita. That dude is, he has to put on a smile. Half the reason he's paid is to put on the smile, okay? At least the 311 dudes, like, they wrote the fucking shit. And even if it sucks ass, it's authentic to them. Yeah, I have absolutely no idea. Wasn't cool enough to be anywhere where this was playing. 519 million views. Ooh. Fucking Frankenstein rap. Poor Things First Dance. It's a beautiful life, oh oh. It's a beautiful life, oh oh. It's something like that. That's about 20 years off. I, I'm gonna know it. Like there's, there's airs of familiarity here. It's like the lies of P to my Bloodborne. Give me the voice. Ah, when you walked in, I knew you were trouble when you walked in. I knew you were trouble when you walked in, of course. <laughs> I realized you were problem. Oh, man. You ever see that uh, TikTok where the person pretends to have gotten a free bucket of KFC chicken by using a Jenna Ortega Voice filter? Yes. <laughs> no king, enlighten me? Well, I mean, it's just really funny, I guess. Yep, this I is it. I pranked KFC with Jenna Ortega's voice and got free chicken bucket. Hello, KFC Delivery. I'm listening to you. I can hear you. <laughs> I hear 
Hello, I want to make an order for delivery a large bucket of chicken wings, original you do bucket two cherry cola and two cheese sauces. Okay, no problem. Uh, payment by cash or card? <laughs> Paying by cash. Your address and data, please. The address will be sent with the link. Stop. I think I recognize your voice. It's Jen Ortega, right? Yeah, it's Jen Ortega. Oh my god, uh, I will do your order for free. <laughs> I just, I, maybe I'm cooked, man. I don't know. That's so fake. Yeah, no, I know. That's why, that's the I main reason it's funny. But this, this order is so good, man. I hear. Hello, I want to make an order for <laughs> delivery a large bucket of chicken wings, original you do, bucket two cherry cola, and two cheese sauces. Okay. <laughs> the way she rattles it off. Oh, man. By the way, my strength hasn't fully returned, but I'm ready to take on the world. You can't just tweet, and I quote, Ben Gesserit voice, fucking the joke you wanted to say, okay? It doesn't work. Ben Gesserit voice, no worries if not. That joke worked because the... It's the dichotomy of the Bene Gesserit voice compelling people to do things combined with the passive aggressive, no worries if not. You can't just put Bene Gesserit voice, you know, and no pickles on the burger. Actually, that one fucking works. When you, when you got it in you, you can't turn it off, okay? But not many of you motherfuckers have it in you. People are just typing like Bene Gesserit voice. I'll have a small fry. Like that doesn't work, bro. <clears throat> Bene Gesserit voice. I'm Jenna Ortega. You got to respect Jenna Ortega because she didn't lead with that, though. She just said, I'll have a delivery, two buckets of chicken, two zero colas, two duo, I don't even know what chicken duo is, and two cheese sauces. Stop. I think I recognize your voice. Are you Jenna Ortega? Yes, I'm Jenna Ortega. Oh my God, I will make your order for free. Big Rig Creates. Oh no. <laughs> can learn shadow ball sino first in evolution line aren't the monday puzzles supposed to be the easiest ones this one doesn't look like it's it, it's made for real poke heads this doesn't seem like it's made for casuals sino steel skarmory that's bad steel first in line egg um Leron. Oh, Aaron, Aaron, thank you. Ghost, first in evolutionary line. I'm going to have to say um, Gloomwick. Litwick, that's it. Litwick, congratulations. Look at this. It's your wick, congratulations. So if I never said I get a down, down, you know, sorry. <laughs> I can't get the 311 mind virus out, bro. Gen 4 fire Pokemon. Cinderace. I still did better than expected. I mean, this is a... <coughs> this is a surprise for me. Magnezone. No, no, no. Um, who's the dude? You know what I'm saying? Metagross. Metagross. Not from that gen. Okay, fair enough. Magnazone was right. Magnazone may actually be my most used Pokemon in Pokemon Go. Good electric type uh, STAB. But also I just respect that they were like, okay, first evolution is a little magnet boy. Next evolution, three magnet boys. Next evolution, they're like, guess what? Big Magnet Boy. Like, I think it's kind of crazy what Mag Magnemite went through. Like, first it was one soul, then it became three souls, and then they merged again into one soul. Like, that's got to fuck with you from an identity standpoint. Like, I don't know the, the sentience level of uh, of Pokemon, but like, 
I feel like to, to go from one soul to many souls is one thing, then to go back to one soul. I mean, I, I'm sure there's times where you're like, was I even the one that was left? Or have I just been, you know, consumed by the whole? <sighs> Things you do by yourself. Monologue. Solitaire. Things with one. Unicycle. Cyclops. Solitaire. Monologue. Give it a shot. Associated with one. That's literally, that's how Cooked New York Times is. It's not even a specific category. It's just, it's just like many people group these together. They're turning the shit into the family feud now. It used to, it used to have integrity, man. I mean, the, these are like stars, right? <laughs> Clusters of stars. Oh, constellations, mmm, celestial clusters. And then, what are, I mean, we, we perfected it today. I would just, for my own brain, I would like to know what this is. Samsung Galaxy, Samsung Cyclone, songs by Post Malone. I don't know, who cares? Spirals in nature. Sunflower? Sunflower's a spiral? Yeah, I'm, I take issue as well with the idea that um, a galaxy is nature. Although I guess I'm thinking of it exclusively as like an Earth thing. Did you know that there are uh, a not insignificant amount of people in the world that think that the hexagonal cloud on hexagon is actually a prison for incarcerated demons, sorry, on, on Saturn, I said on Hexagon, my mistake, on Jupiter, you guys, you're missing the point, and if I find out that this is on Saturn and not on Jupiter, your ass is permabanned for sure, it's Saturn, it turns out it's Saturn, it's Saturn, it is Saturn, okay, here we go, I'm sorry, you were so confident in your astronomy that you punched down, you made a bad faith correction. You don't deserve that bit. That bit's going to YouTube. Always dangerous to do that though, because on YouTube, like 30% of the viewers will be like, actually, it is a prison for demons. <laughs> I saw a video from the Gemini probe of it being up close, and there were all sorts of fucking flying specters and shit. And I'm like, bro, that's from the new Ghostbusters. You're cooked. Any of you go see the new Ghostbusters uh, in theaters, by the way? It's pretty good. Remove yourself from this chat, okay? No, no, no. Thank you. We will not be, you will not catch us at the multiplex watching Ghostbusters 3-3, okay? It's not going to happen. Did you see Dune? Look at me, motherfucker. Did you see my fucking visage on Thursday? No, I didn't go to the movie theater this weekend. Have you lost your mind? Basically, the only thing I could do was watch my kid. You might be like, that sounds counterintuitive. Yeah, but Mother Nature makes you like lock the fuck in. So even when I was locked in, I was like, hey, don't do that. You know, it's about as much energy as I could muster, but still. Wondering if there will be a Canuck riot after the finals this year. Here's another good one for you. Hey, maybe you should wonder why the chicken crossed the fucking road. Good joke, Grandpa. Would you find it? fucking etched on a cuneiform tablet at the intersection of the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers in the cradle of civilization, you old-ass fucking hack. He's the motherfucker that would have sold me this shit copper. <laughs> Dude, that's the next step. That's the next step. I called Al Nasir and got free copper with my Jenna Ortega voice. Hi, I'd like a delivery of... 38 ingots of pure copper? Stop. I, I think I recognize your voice. Are you? <laughs> oh, man. What the fuck is this, man? It's an abomination. Artisan Baker's multi-seed keto bread? 
<laughs> this looks like it's from a supermarket simulator, bro. What is this? It's not bread. <laughs> it's <laughs> Why is it a JPEG? <laughs> it's <laughs> What is it? Two, 18 ounces of bread. Two times 18 ounces of bread. I mean, I got to feel like, obviously, you pay a little extra for keto bread. I'm sorry. But it's, it's still... It can't be, I'm sorry. It can't be that expensive, man. I'm going to go $8.99. Okay. Okay, I'm goaded. What can I say? You will not catch me buying Artisan Baker's multi-seed keto bread, two times 18 ounce frozen fucking tiles of wheat, or maybe there's not wheat. I don't know. I don't know what you make. I guess you make it with beef because you can't have any carbohydrates in it. What the fuck is keto bread? Grow a spine, bro. No disrespect. You want the benefit of not eating carbs? Then fucking forego sandwiches. Get your shit in the, get, get a burrito bowl or something like that. You got to walk the walk a little bit. Why should I? They sell it. Yeah, but you know it tastes like fucking ass, bro. Don't delude yourself. You're living like an, an approximation of a carbo head's life. You could be living a rich keto life. Instead, you're living a, a facsimile of a carbo head's life. Like, pick a lane. Don't you want to align your behavior to your spirit at some point? Or are you just out here like, no, my favorite food is sandwiches, but I don't eat any carbohydrates. Like, fucking... Harvest some richness from this, this green marble we're on, bro. You're only here for a short amount of time. Worldla. Um, this is a strange worldla. This is Batman taking his dog for a walk. Like that's his bat cowl and he's holding the leash and then his dog is like, is walking. So you're kind of like, um, you got like a fake Denmark type vibe, just being honest. All right, it's Denmark. <laughs> Box office game, finally, some real freaking entertainment. Did you, librarian, this one's specifically for you, okay? Did you see the uh, comparison of a shot from no Way Home, the Spider-Man film, versus a shot from Madam Web. Now, it is a... I'm sure it's cherry-picked, and I'm sure that Madam Web is pure ass. But the Spider-Man one literally looks like the start of a Grand Theft Auto V cutscene. It's just like one guy holding his phone in a green screen crucible. And then the Madam Web shot legit looks like something out of Lost in Translation. There's like composition and depth. There's, there's film grain to it. Like <coughs> their excuse was that it was shot during COVID so the actor couldn't get on location. What are we supposed to do? Not make a Spider-Man? Because of the pandemic? Then the virus wins, bro. Everybody read your lines at home into your phone camera, and we'll composite the movie here in Burbank. 347 million. That's kind of, I mean, at a $32 million week in week three, it's kind of a fast fall off. I almost feel like this could be like a Rogue One type joint. Chris Evans. Inside of you, there are two wolves. Always trust the first wolf. I got a bone to pick, by the way, because th this is bringing up all sorts of trauma for me. One, who invented that expression? Hey, if your gut tells you something on a multiple choice test and then you get confused later and start thinking it could be another answer, always go with your gut. That's a fucking bullshit piece of advice. The reason they tell you that piece of advice is so that you don't get mad twice so that if you change your answer you don't go oh i should have not changed it i knew it right you you avoid that like loss aversion sometimes your first instinct is fucking cooked bro and you gotta let it percolate in your brain a little bit you should definitely 
like reason out the best possible answer that you can have. And if one of them is 49% and one of them is 51% in your brain, you go with whatever's 51 and let the chips fall where they may. Secondly, I hope whoever invented the expression, if you shake it more than three times, you're just playing it with it, is getting their shit fucking rocked in hell right now. Why would you ever invent that phrase, bro? Now we got people out here walking around with dabs of urine all over their chinos just because they're worried that people are going to think they're jerking off at the urinal for trying to get the last few drops of piss out. That expression has done like more damage to masculinity than any other meme in history. If you shake, nobody, nobody's playing with it at the urinal, bro. That's what the stalls are for. Prince of Persia. The Sands of Sand. Metacritic score of 84. It's a Prince of Persia game. It's this year's Prince of Persia game. It's Prince of Persia. The Lost Crown. There it is. <laughs> Play yesterday's. Brother, you can't experience yesterday's son. Can't see yesterday's moon. All you can do is try to atone for your mistakes in the future. Let it filter through you. Like tar through a cigarette. It is not for us to experience any longer. You can absolutely see it again. Fantastic. So now we're at motherfuckers. You want to see the sunrise tomorrow? No, tomorrow's sunrise isn't going to be that good. You know what's a great sunrise? Go Google. It be the sunrise May 7th, 1991. Now that was a fucking sunrise, bro. You discontented motherfuckers. This fucking cuphead, bro. Cuphead. Oh, no. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> Skullgirls. He's crazy. He's crazy. <laughs> How'd you know that? I played some Skullgirls. I remember I did like the basic tutorial. And then I was like, how do I get good at this? And people were like, you should do the advanced tutorial. And at one stage of the advanced tutorial, it's like parry a, a, an attack like 50 times or something like that. And I could only parry it like once every eight attempts. I was like, I'm fucking done with fighting games, bro. That's just too much. I respect what you're doing with this high skill floor stuff, but that's too much. For me, you, you do it, that's fine. The advanced tutorial has 1% completion. <laughs> Why was everyone lying to me and saying you should do it? Fox abuse death. Tunic. Suicide, narrator, violence. Life is strange. One. Mini games. Kidnapping 2D. <laughs> Video games are so funny, dude. Dark humor, candy trail, animal cruelty. <laughs> uh, little misfortune. I don't know it. I don't, I'm not saying anything negative about it. I've just never heard of it. First time Life is Strange has been brought up. I can't gain any traction. Bro, we played through the first three Life is Strange games. On the, on the stream. Life is Strange 1 is a great... What, what do you even call them these days? It's not really like a visual novel. It's a great narrative adventure game. It's actually really good. I, in my opinion. Life is Strange 2 is a complete disaster, in my opinion. It's way too on-the-nose, like... Like, Life is Strange 1 is like almost like exaggerated high school stories mixed with a little bit of supernaturalia 
And then like Life is Strange 2 is like, what if everybody you met was like an evil caricature? Would you kill the evil person or would you let them go? And I'm like, I get it. Like, I get what you're doing here. But it's just so like, it's so transparent. Oh, you thought that old person who gave you a sandwich was gonna help you out? Oh, well, unfortunately for you, it turns out they run a white supremacist gang out of their basement, and now you gotta escape. Do you blow up their house with a stick of TNT, or do you just let them live? Not again. <laughs> and then, like, every fucking act was the same thing. You get rescued by, like, a, a good adult, and they're like, hey, slugger, here's a Ray Bradbury book. Then it turns out they others forming like a militia in their laneway house to overthrow the government and you're like brother please can i just meet like one normal person that one's not that bad <laughs> well, i think it is actually <laughs> oh so you love the government wait 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 I didn't say I love the government. I just probably love the government more than I love what the militia's going to do after they take over, okay? You're asking, you're not asking the right question. Yeah, I just don't think I know. Oh, no, 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 no. Isn't Russell Crowe in um, Thor, Love, and Thunder? He plays like New Zeus or something like that. And then the, the other one, I just don't know. <laughs> Who the hell does she play in American Psycho, bro? His fiance. Oh, <laughs> you're so right. My wife. Oh, man. Things you'll never hear Patrick Bateman say. My wife. He would say that. You could definitely do a um, Patrick Bateman. 2024 bit where he talks about how Borat sucked up all the critical attention but for his money Bruno is really where Sasha Baron Cohen hit his stride it's before he succumbed to the excesses that led to the disaster of a movie like The Dictator when he still had some of that Hunter S. Thompson gonzo style comedy that made him famous on the Ali G show it could totally work man That joke has broad appeal, not. First off, Clutch Borat reference. Secondly, if I wanted a joke with, bro listen, I'm not gonna go. There's two, there's literally like 12 ways that auto complete the joke. And like every single one of them is offensive to a different subset of the community. It's like a speed run at alienating the entire audience. There's the sexist way to do the joke. Um, Insulting your intelligence, insulting my intelligence, insulting both of our intelligences, and let's not even go there, okay? I think I recognize that analysis. Uh, are you Jenna Ortega? Yes, I am Jenna Ortega. Legerity, a noun meaning alert, facile quickness of mind or body. Legerette originates from Middle French, rooted in Latin levies for light. Legerity. A noun meaning huge. There's no way L E J is not a phoneme that will exist in the English language. It's just not going to happen. There was some like Francophobic guy in charge of stealing words from France and making sure that they came across with no Frenchness still intact. He was, must have been sick when fucking rendezvous made it into the dictionary, but everything else, they, they scrubbed it, man. Ogival, a adjective meaning of relating to or having the form of an ogive or an og. Ogival, a adjective meaning of relating to or having the form of an ogive or an og. Ogival, a adjective meaning of relating to or having the form of an ogive or an og. Ogival, a adjective meaning of relating to or having the. <laughs> that was cooked, man. <laughs> O-G-H-I-V-A-L. Primordial, 
Okay, yeah. The adjective meaning first cre- The soup from whence we came. Jacquard. A noun meaning a fabric of intricate variegated weave or pattern. Jacquard. A noun meaning a fabric of intricate variegated weave or pattern. Jacquard. A noun meaning a fabric of intricate variegated weave or pattern. Uh, I don't know, man. That's a tough one. <laughs> Torpid. A adjective meaning sluggish in functioning or acting. I'm cooked. Hawsers. A noun meaning a large rope for towing, mooring, or securing a ship. The word originates from Middle English and Anglo-French, meaning to raise or hoist. Hawsers. A noun meaning a large rope for towing, mooring, or securing a ship. The word origin. Yes! <laughs> We're so back. Oh, man. Jacquard. Is it possible for... English people to say French words without putting a little bit of that jacquard. With, you know, like a little, a, a wink to the camera. Jacquard. Try that in a small town. Oh, you mean in a petite fucking, I don't know what town is in, in French. Je voudrais un my souffle dans une petite ville. This is non. No. This is curry. There's two pictures. The fuck is that, bro? She looks like a cannonball. <laughs> that's, that's from the nation of India. What? Are you crazy? Lamb, tomatoes, onions, garlic, ginger, black lime, cumin, cardamom, cloves, cinnamon, black pepper, red chili peppers, and salt. Brother, I am cooked. What the fuck is this Morrowind-ass bowl? I have absolutely no idea what this could be. Is it like, is it Ethiopia? As warmer from Yemen. Oh, my God. I can go to Yemen. I'm a food analyst. I don't know what that is. Like, I, I would probably eat it. Like, this looks pretty good. Mostly because it comes with six stacks of bread on top of it. This one's freaking me out a little bit. But, I, you know, when in Rome. Shrimp monitor. Why does my back hurt? <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to assume thank you for the raid, Daniel. That's a, that's a good raid message. Don't be alarmed, by the way. I know I sound bad. I feel great. You should have been alarmed. On Everyone was laughing it up on Thursday. My like soul was leaving my body. My skin turned gray. I was shivering. But because I sounded like semi-normal, people were like, he's just cozy. I was dying. Why am I cold at 80 degrees and you didn't realize you were sick? Well, if you actually watch the stream, which I did because I was there, many times I, uh, I said, yes, I'm sick. Because people would come into the stream and see uh, big purple bags under my eyes and gray skin and hear my voice. And they would be like, he sounds like he's getting a little sick. And I would say, whoa, what fucking graduated the... U.S. Virgin Islands School of Medicine is here? Like... <laughs> so you are, you have made up a straw man. And listen, the only thing I'm mad at you for, because I make it up myself all the time, is that you didn't do a good job. You made something up that was an evilly, uh, easily disprovable lie. You should get better at making straw men. It's the rhetorical technique on page 11 of my How to Win Arguments book. Yours are as well. Oh, I see you've read page 17. Uh, no, you. That's a, that's a very relevant technique. A lot of people dismiss it as whataboutism. Well, I say, what about the time that you used whataboutism? When employed skillfully, it can be a very difficult rhetorical technique to parry. You guys see um, the photos of Link from Red and Link wearing... The iced out drip of the slump god. <laughs> I, just, I don't have anything else to say. Good for him, man. <laughs> Ooh.
You're 40 years old? He's like 51, man. He, he is looking clean with it. I ain't mad at him. He's 46? Oh, whatever. I was so sick this weekend, I made a terrible mistake. The grocery store was selling Coke Zero variants. I needed to re-up uh, on my stash. I said, you know what? Why wouldn't I get Coke Zero spiced? Raspberry spiced flavored calorie free cola. Um, the Coca-Cola Corporation was not cooking with this one. It basically, it tastes like, uh, like toothpaste. It's really bad. Also, what I, I've never, when I, when I thought of spiced, I assumed that it would be like, um, I don't know, like, like peppery or something, like a little spicy. I didn't assume that spiced meant it, it tastes like raspberries. I guess the English language has changed a lot recently, but it's kind of good. It tastes like Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> There's just no excuse for, uh, for it not being carbonated enough. That's my two cents. Is the non-zero spiced better? Brother, I'm never going to try it. Which one of us is crazy? We're going nuts on the table. You know how in Fast and the Furious they race for slips? Here we argue for nuts. Put your nuts on the table. I'm putting mine on the table. One of us is leaving without our nuts. If the shit tastes bad, why would you want to drink more of it? Why would you want to try a different version? You drink IPAs? Honestly, uh, IPA heads are the most powerful body in alcohol. We live rent-free in your heads. I used to get annoyed. Guys, you just haven't appreciated the depth of a Citra Hops double IPA. Now I just laugh and I recognize that it means that I have so much power. IPAs are so awful. They all taste like air fresheners. Okay, fucking more for me, bitch. Fuck you. They sell Modelo too. Go get some Modelo. You ever see Bobby Flay's show? No, not that one. The other one? No, not that one. The other one? Listen. I like Bobby Flay. And honestly, the fact that he is uh, obviously an asshole actually makes him a better person to like playing the heel in Food Network cooking shows. I don't know what's wrong with society. You all want good guys and bad guys. You want people that you can root for and you want people that you can root against. The show's called fucking Beat Bobby Flay. All of a sudden, people are like, Bobby Flay's an asshole. I'm like, yeah, that's why you want him to lose, motherfucker. He's, he's embraced his role. Now, should he be yelling at his staff? Probably not. <laughs> Does he have bold Southwest flavors? Yeah, I've heard. I've had family who met him off air tell me he's still an asshole you have confused yourself when i have spoken so plainly to you sorry to use the parlance of robert eggers 2015 film the witch i 100 percent believe that he is not playing an asshole character for tv i believe that um he may be an asshole in real life and i think it makes him a better television villain as a result as long as he's not you know out there committing felonies, him just being like kind of an ass, that's perfect. That's the flavor I'm looking for. Because let me tell you, from my experience in Checkpoint League, there's no thrill or value to be found in being a good person who pretends to be a heel. 20% of the people watching can't separate reality from fiction. So there are people out there during Checkpoint League there were people writing comments that were like, this guy has actually lost. He's won two levels of Mario, and all of a sudden, he's a narcissist. He's cutting WWE-style promos that I'll admit are entertaining, but at the same time, he should show a little bit of respect. If you want to lean into the heel role, you actually need someone who's actually a, at least a little bit of an asshole. Because I think... Otherwise, if you're like a good person and you're just pretending to be an asshole for TV, as soon as people say negative shit about you, you'll just turn it off. <laughs> That's why you need Bobby Flay, bro. Is Dan a heel? No, and that's the, um, that's the tragedy of it. Dan is actually 
too pure of a soul to now be on reality television. Bro was out there literally playing a game of like a millionaire werewolf. And he, he did a strategic move and then, you know, 10,000 of the least sane people you've ever seen in your entire life are on social media like, <laughs> go away, old man, we hate you. We fucking hate you, bro. You ruined werewolf. You ruined werewolf for me. I know I wasn't playing. The producers hate you, bro. That's why, it, and as a result, he'll probably uh, never go on a television reality show ever again. He's too pure. That's why you need someone who's actually like kind of a bad person. I watched him make a girl cry on Big Brother. Based. No disrespect, you will not find me going on Big Brother. If I went on Big Brother, I do not think I would win. But one thing you would not catch me doing is going on the show to win $500,000 and then being like, no, 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 what I actually wanted to do was make one friend I'm never gonna talk to again and be seen uh, by a ni as a nice guy. What's the point, bro? I could do that from home. What Twitch emo do you wish came back to notoriety? Great question. What's the, I was trying to find this in, um, in Justin's chat. What's the emote of the guy looking incredulous? Like he's looking at the camera like, like you just said something. You just told like your eighth insane lie of the evening and he doesn't have the energy anymore to argue with you. So instead he just looks at you like, what's that one? No, no, it's a, it's a skinny, Caucasian male with brown hair. Yeah, okay, it's, wait a second. It's, I gotta scroll up, I gotta, it's Weird Champ, yeah, Weird, they removed Weird Champ? No, 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 it's uh, like, I know that that's Weird Champ with Pod Champ's, Pog Champ's face. But there is a Weird Champ face of a Caucasian male as well. I'm being gaslit here, bro. I swear it to you. And he's looking at it like, like he's kind of looking up a bit. Is it the Linus one? I don't know, post, wait, just, just scroll up. It's, it's forehead, it's four weird, four weird. <laughs> yes, I mean, thank you, was that so hard? It's forehead, guys sick of your shit but he doesn't want to call you out and ruin the energy of the evening for everybody else so instead he waits till your uber comes and then he says hey just so you guys know like everything that guy said was like he was full of shit the whole night yep that's it right there i will add that to my channel <laughs> thank you i gotta be honest though i i I'm half joking when I say this. I feel like, you know how like when you play Lethal Company, you have a shared mod list with your friends so that you're all on the same page? I feel like everybody that I collaborate with more than one time per month on average, we need to have a shared emote list. Cause I'm rolling over to Apollo's chat. Dude doesn't even have like Keck W enabled. Like it's, it's 2016 mode in Apollo's chat. People are still typing like the, the Twitch sanctioned Pong champ that's like the the Bones guy. Can you do Pog Bones? Or did, there's Komodo hype too, don't get me wrong. Yeah, people are typing Pog Bones sincerely. Then I go over to, to Justin's chat. Justin doesn't have uh, I can't. Then I go over to Chib's chat and Chib has like so many emotes that I can't even find the emote I'm looking for. He has like 250 better Twitch TV emotes and he actively prunes the losers out of the list once a week. Every, every time I go to Chib's stream, there's like a new flavor of the month emote. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, you're constantly like just trying to <laughs> write a sentence. It's so true. Like, you just type, like, uh, 
what is he talking about? And then instead of what, it's the yellow M&M like slapping his forehead at the computer. And you're like, I look like a fucking idiot, dude. Don't get me started on mouth chat. People are posting like animals hugging other animals and stuff like that. We just, I, I feel like it would be for the best if we all had at least like a shared emo like foundation that then you could build off of. But it's like we absolutely have to have like these 25 uh, better Twitch TV emotes just so that we can communicate in, uh, in other people's chats. Explain why you're against 7 TV. Um, easy. I already have better Twitch TV. That's like saying, I don't need a PS5, I still have my PS4. Let me ask you a question, my brother. Is your life better now that you have a PS5? Or was your life better when you just had a PS4? Better? Oh, okay, more power to you. I didn't realize you loved Madden that much, but... I'm a big believer in um, the idea that true contentment and happiness comes from within instead of from without. So I, I don't chase the sugar high of switching to a so-called better product. I'll just stick with the dog shit version and uh, generate some more dopamine organically for my pancreas, if you don't mind. And uh, no fucking 4K curved 3D 87 inch girth Sony television with the fucking translucent display is going to change that, okay? You see the Balatro subreddit said you've got no hoes? <laughs> you know what? They're right. I don't know if they meant that as an insult or something, but yeah, yeah, I don't have any hoes, okay? Because I'm a married man with a kid. I got to be honest, guys. I'm just keeping it real with you. I was a good dad this weekend, but my kid was pissing me off. <laughs> This is the real side of parenting. They won't show you on TikTok. 38 ass degree fever. Just want to sleep. Kids coming over to me. I don't like you. You shouldn't say things like that to your daddy when he's sick, honey. Daddy loves you very much. Okay, I like you one day a week. And she, for some reason she started going... I don't know where she learned this from. She started saying butt smash. But then she would literally just like slap me on the head of my dick. She wasn't even smacking me on the butt. She would just walk up to the front of me and go like, and I was getting mad. I was like, don't do that. That's so good. Like it's already, I could barely like walk up and down the stairs. And all of a sudden she's like, you know, just physically abusing me and stuff like that. And then, yes, oh, no, dude, yes, this is like uh, a key and peel bit. We went to the park yesterday. Everyone's feeling good for the first time in forever, okay? I say, hey, why don't you wear your light-up shoes? She says, I want to wear my flower boots. I say, aren't your flower boots too small? She says, no, they're fine. So I say, okay, I put on the flower boots. 20 minutes into the park, you know, 20 minutes from home, she goes, Daddy, my foot hurts. Take off her shoes. She's got blisters on both of her heels because of the flower boots. She says, Daddy, carry me. I say, okay, honey, of course. You got these blisters on your heels because of these small-ass boots. Of course I carry you on my shoulder. Trying to carry her on my shoulder for three seconds. She sits up nicely. And then for the rest of the time, she leans all her weight over on my fucking head. And she's like clutching, like, like reaching over my skull to like grab at my Adam's apple and shit. It's, you know, it's like a, it's a reasonably long walk home. But that's not even where the, it ends, bro. So then we took her home. Kate put bandages on, on each of her heels just so she doesn't pick at it. Then I had to give her a bath. I, I run the water. It's literally like it's... The water is so cold that an adult would not take a bath in it. But that's like the temperature that she considers almost too hot to like bear. But at some point, you got to make sure the water isn't too cold. Otherwise, it turns solid. It's called ice. So I, I hold her and I dip her toes into the, 
bathtub and she says it hurts my band-aid and i say oh well i can understand that maybe like it would hurt that your foot um because like the skin got rubbed off a little bit but you'll get used to it in just a second she's like no it hurts my band-aid and i'm like well it's not your band-aid it's your foot and then she's like going off man anyway so like we got her in the bath cleaned her up everything's good I go to put her pajama pants on. She's dancing. She's twisting around. I'm saying, stay still. She's jumping up and down. While putting the pajama pants on, a, an atom of pajama pant touched the Band-Aid, and she looked at me and went, yeah! And I say, what happened? She said, you poked my Band-Aid. I don't like you. And I was like, listen, First off, I told you to wear the light-up shoes that fit comfortably because we were going to go for a long walk, but you insisted on wearing the flower boots because it's uh, so spring-like outside that all the flowers have started to blooming, so you wanted to wear flowers on your shoes because you had flowers on your dress as well. Did, Oppie, did you or not, did you not make the choice to wear small footwear that caused this whole mess in the first place? So next time, I'm imposing my will on the, on the choice of footwear. Oh! Don't go down that path. I guess that's true. It's probably where you, you start to lose the plot as a parent. When you're like, to avoid this in the future, you're like, here's the course of action I'm going to take. It's naive. You can't avoid it in the future. All you can do is be more patient. That's hard, though, when you're fucking... Shit's getting beaten by <laughs> influenza type A. 24-7. 311 tiny desk cover of down stuck in your fucking head. Yeah, they do be smacking your head like a damn drum. There's like no survival instinct, bro. Like I'm carrying your whole body on my shoulders and then you're up here going <laughs> Like what do you what do you think is going to happen? It's like my ass trying to open the emergency exit of the plane mid-flight. He do be splashing. <laughs> Why is he coughing so much? <laughs> Me, every time my toe touches the water. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Drinking water that makes me cough. Oh, man. So it's been like, it's been four years, right? Can you guys tell me of those TikToks about your balls can taste soy sauce? That was all, it was an op, right? That's a throwback. Not for me. It, it basically feels like last week. I tried it. It was an op. Thank you for being the only honest internet user. You were a bio major. Please tell me you didn't believe it. Your fucking ass when Charles Darwin steps into the Royal Society in 1807. Charles Darwin, you're a naturalist. Please tell me you don't believe that these organisms arrived at different morphologies as a result of their environment and weren't instead created in their final form by one almighty being. It's science, bitch! That's why we do the experiment! We're talking about dipping your balls in soy sauce? Yeah, and the most like revolutionary treatment for inflammatory bowel disorders is literally shoving another person's shit up your ass. If everybody who worked at the fucking fecal transplant lab was as much of a naysayer as you, I don't even know what we'd be doing out here. Probably still just eating Danon fruit on the bottom yogurt that doesn't fucking do anything. Yeah, but what good scientifically are soy sauce balls? Fucking zero calorie snack? So is water? <laughs> Ooh. Paul Atreides be like, Mmm, sorry, it's snack time. Gulp, gulp. Water Andrews are so annoying. Like, if you are in love with water so much, why don't you have a six pack? That's it. Like, every time anyone brings up anything that's less healthy than water, your ass is always in the chat like, Have you ever heard of water? Okay, take your shirt off. Are you living by the tenants you claim to live by, motherfucker? Then what's going on right here? And right here? And under here? Or are you being disingenuous? 
to seem greater than you are online, to be an avatar of your own ambition rather than a reflection of your genuine life. Yeah, I lie a little. Okay, that's fine. Just don't be like so annoying about it. People should lie about being less healthy. Instead of being like, oh, like, yeah, I had a salad for dinner. And then like ignoring the part where you also ate like half a bag of Doritos. You should just be like, yeah, I smoke. That's actually like a sick lie. Because then if you outlive them, they would be like insanely pissed off. They'd be like, what the fuck, bro? But you've been smoking for like 35 years. You'd be like, I don't know, man. <laughs> God just said, fuck you, I guess. I don't know. I only eat plant-based salads. Even my lettuce is plant-based. Even the bowl, the bowl is compostable. This is, everyone chill out a little bit, okay? Even my bowl is keto. Keto Atreides the second, is that something? And then you could be like uh, Duke Keto Atreides the second after eating 16 slices of buttered bacon and you could make him his eyes like blue as fuck. Please save that tweet in case Oscar Isaac ever goes on Ozempic. Now, I'm not saying at any point he should or that he needs to. I'm just saying that's the only situation in which that tweet would bang and it would go off like a fucking firework. D.L. Guiga, did you do the 90-minute um, California Olympic Park scenic ride today? Pretty good moments on it. Some pretty good moments. That's about all I got. Haven't cycled today yet. Awake all night. I feel that, brother. This is my first time in six days. My mind was playing tricks on me. I think it was like Thursday. I, um, I was like, oh my God, I'm not sick anymore. I feel great. I'm going to ride my bike. I got out of bed and I was like, it was 30 minutes before my alarm went off. I was like, I'm, I'm so much better. Then my foot touched the first staircase and it was like. <laughs> like I. I don't know how to describe it. The shit hit my bloodstream, let's put it that way. Normal newborn behavior, but it sucks. Yeah, it's crazy too, because like society won't let you be mad at your, uh, at your kid. So we all have to like do this you know, little song and dance where you're like, I'm not mad at my child, but like I really wish that they would just like close their eyes and get some sleep. But then inside, we, we're all doing like the you know, prisoner's dilemma. Am I gonna admit that I'm like a little mad at my kid for this, even though it's not fair? Or one of the worst things, or not worst, but most annoying, is you'll be like, oh yeah, we didn't get a lot of sleep last night because like our, our daughter was kind of like going crazy. She woke up many times during the night and uh, you know, we couldn't seem to like calm her down too easily. And then the other person will go like, uh, oh, poor girl. And I'm like, did you listen to a word I said? Once she finally went to sleep, she just stayed in there till like 9.30. My ass was up at 5.45, like... She can sleep as long as she wants most of the time. She's fine. It's common parlance to pity the child in place of the parents, though. Yes, I know, but it's, uh, it's dishonest. It's dishonest and we should stop. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You can get mad at your kid without, like, taking it out on them. Like, yesterday, before bed, she was like, I want a cup of water. I said, no problem, honey. I went down, I got her a cup of water. Little parenting tip. I also got myself a cup of water. Chugged it while I was filling it up from the fridge. Gulped it, and then said, you know what? I've been good today. Filled up another glass. Slow sipped that shit for a minute before I took her glass up. Took her glass up. <clears throat> Gave it to her, and she was holding like eight toys, and then the water like in her hand at the same time. Kate said, honey, don't do that. You're going to spill the water. She said, okay. Put it down a second later. Grabbed it again like this. I said, you heard what mommy said. Don't grab it like that. She said, no, I want to grab it like this. Three seconds later. She dropped the toy, bent over to pick it up, and unloaded the fucking cup of water all over the floor. 
and immediately just started screaming, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And you're just like. <sighs> and the, the, the crazy part of it, where are you? Is that that's what the parenting is. The parenting is not like, hey, listen to me so that you don't make a mistake. It's like now you got to be like, I told you not to do that. And now you're upset that the thing I told you would definitely happen happened. And I got I to gotta console you without being like, well, what would you expect? When the cough medicine hits. Hey, I'm happy to report, by the way. Yes! Even though I was sick, I did not succumb to uh, NyQuil or DayQuil. Even if it has a, a dude in a fucking nightcap on it with button up shirts and trousers for his jammies. Why is that a good thing? There's been some literature reviews that seem to indicate that it may lead to neurodegenerative disease later in life. I take them like sleeping pills. You should get your ass on uh, melatonin. Asterisk, editor's note. If one day it comes out that uh, daily dosing melatonin leads to an even worse kind of disease, I apologize. There's no way I could have known. <laughs> you have to remember your audience is on the global catastrophe trip. That is true. I mean, I'm not 100% out on global catastrophe. But I definitely feel like whenever I see people that are like, we'll all probably be dead in 10 years, I'm like, you guys are reading some fucking, you're, you're platinum subscribers at Zero Hedge or something. I don't know what the fuck news you're taking in. Like, it's not all good, don't get me wrong, but 10 years, they're 20 at most. Have you seen the price of a Big Mac these days? In 2008, when the great financial crisis hit, you could get a Crunchwrap Supreme for $1.09. Nowadays, it's $9.97 on DoorDash at one Taco Bell in the financial district of San Francisco. It's so over. I'm at the age now where I think, like, people younger than me are now, like, waxing philosophical about an era that I lived through that I have a lot of positive associations with, but I still got to, like, push back on it a little bit. People will be like, you used to feed your whole family at Swiss Chalet. You, your wife, three kids, all in cost, 2005, $13.99. I'm like, no the fuck you didn't, idiot. That's like, that was the price of a half chicken dinner. That's just dad's portion. Now mom, she might get a quarter chicken or she might get a little crazy. She might start ordering a la carte. She might say, you know what I really like at Swiss Chalet? I really like the pierogies. And all you're like, oh, here we go pierogies and chopped chicken on a Kaiser roll with a side of chalet sauce. What's this going to set me back? Can you grab with your toes? Listen, buddy. It's not that kind of website. Foot fetish guys always be like, I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm not going there. Say it. I was just going to say, I think it's too real. Foot fetish guys always be like, wow, your lunch looks really good. By the way, uh, what kind of shoes are those? I'm just going to say, okay, listen, there's nothing wrong with having a foot fetish. But as a matter of like public awareness, you should know if you're talking to a dude and he doesn't say like nice shoes. If he says like, what shoes are those? Like, oh, what kind of shoes are those? By the way, what's your shoe size? You should know what you're getting into, okay? A guy without a foot fetish might say like, oh, I like your shoes. But a guy with a foot fetish is going to be like, and again, there's nothing wrong with it. He'll be like, you know, wow, nice shoes. What are those? Like a six and a half? There's a subtle difference, but there is there's a difference. <laughs> wow, the chick working at Reebok was way in the beat then. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm just being real with you. Working a customer service job as a young woman must fucking suck. 
So it, like literally probably 5% of their male clientele are secretly in love with them as soon as they meet them, right? Especially like a job where they're paid to be nice to you. You always hear stories about like, you know, I didn't, I, I'm a waitress. I didn't give this guy any signals at all. And then on the receipt, he wrote like, I saw the way that you looked at me all night. Here's my hotel room. What do I do? And I'm like, you did, dude who ordered two pounds of chicken wings? Really? <laughs> What'd you, what kind of vibes do you think you were putting out there, brother? She's impressed by my spice tolerance. So true. No one's ever ordered the wings uh, hot. And I'm not talking white guy hot. I'm talking like as hot as you would make them if I wasn't white hot at the Hooters before. It's the first time we've ever had that order come in on the ticket. <laughs> oh. To build more tension. This is how it feels using a rotary telephone. Then one of your fucking friends has like three eights in a row, and you're like, oh fuck, here we go. It's still, so I've gotten over my phone anxiety um, to a large extent. What was my secret? I, you're not gonna like it, but I'm gonna say it because you asked. Having bigger problems and also needing to talk to people on the phone. Like if you don't have like real shit going on in your life, you can kind of afford to be like, I'm nervous for this pizza delivery phone call. But like if you gotta put dinner on the table, you gotta go. <laughs> like chop chop, motherfucker. But at the same time, it's still so crazy to me to think back to like, 1997 and remember that people would pick up their home phone on first ring and just be like hello i would love to have a conversation with someone i don't need please identify yourself immediately that's great you you were just people were strapped the fuck up with small talk ready to go and sometimes you know you'd pick up the phone and you'd be like hello and they'd be like, hello, is this uh, Mr. Letourneau? You'd be you'd like, yeah, Mr. Letourneau here. They'd be like, oh, how are you doing tonight, Mr. Letourneau? You'd be like, back the fuck up, motherfucker. Who am I speaking to? This will inform how much I tell you about my day. If you're calling my ass about my car insurance or something like that, I don't, I don't need to tell you. Oh, actually, you know, I was backed up in traffic today. The boss was being like a little bit of a jerk, you know? Like, who are you? Nothing like the rush of calling your girlfriend's house and her parents pick up. So true, so true. I mean, just to, maybe the world is not that different. Maybe they just have their contacts on their phone. There were definitely times in like the ninth grade, I wouldn't be like, hey, I'm gonna call you tonight. I would just be like, this is my friend's name. I would look it up in the phone book, call them, and then like a, a man I'd never met would pick up the phone. And I would say like, hi, can I talk to your teenage daughter, please? And he's like, of course you can. No, pr who is this, by the way? Oh, man's name? Sure, that seems like it just couldn't possibly be weird. <laughs> and then she wasn't like, why the fuck are you calling me? We didn't agree on this. She was just like, what's up? And I'm like, oh, did you do the biology homework? I was having problems with question 10B. And then she's like, oh, I thought we went over this. And I'm like, I already got 10B, but I just wanted to, just wanted a human connection. Oh, thank you, thank you. One day in third grade, I called every person in my class for fun. Dude, my neighbor used to prank call our bus driver. Like, I, our bus driver just got such shit for no reason. Like, literally for the crime of driving us to and from school safely. I would go over to his house. I mean, I would, basically, I was an enabler because I didn't stop it. How'd you have his phone number? It was in the book, man. I definitely also, <laughs> I swear to you that this is a real story. <laughs> I was like 10 or 11. 
and I lived in like it was very very rural but on my street that was like I don't know five or six kilometers long there were maybe like six or seven families that had kids my age so we would hang out from time to time and one of the kids let's just call him Michael he was like a year younger than me we used to hang out now and then a little bit of an unusual kid but I thought we got along okay one day I was playing outside and uh I came back in a couple hours later and my grandma said, oh, uh, your friend Michael called for you. And I said, oh, okay, what did he say? And I swear to God, she said, hey, I just, she said, he said, hey, I just wanted him to know that he ruined my life. <laughs> and I went, oh, okay. And then she said, so what's that about? And I said, I don't know. And she said, you don't know? And I said, I honestly don't know. And uh, was messed up is that like he still kept inviting me over to his house. We still talked on like the school bus and stuff like that. At no point did he ever say like, hey, here's why I called your grandma and said that he ruined my life. I guess he just got over it or maybe it was like a prank or something. Just a weird sense of humor. <laughs> oh, man. In the speed run, the runner goes straight up the middle. This is like you're, you're seeing a motherfucker in physical therapy and you're like Usain Bolt can run this distance in like 9.71 seconds. Like, <laughs> like, a, like a fiberglass shin, bro. What do you mean the speedrunner just climbs up? Librarian, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you, thank you. We gotta go wide grip, Marty. <laughs> okay, okay, wide grip, Marty. Oh, me when I get a makeout session in ninth grade. Okay, quit bragging. Me when uh, in ninth grade at my friend's birthday party. Me and another girl go into the closet for seven minutes in heaven, and I say, don't worry. I'm not going to try to kiss you in here or anything. I don't want to make you uncomfortable. So then we just sit in the closet for seven minutes in the darkness. And then when my friends open the door, they all ask her, so what happened in there? And she says, nothing. It was kind of weird. <laughs> The perils of being a gentleman in the contemporary era. If only I was a knight in the medieval court. Maybe I'd get some respect. You need to lower your moment of inertia. Okay, speak to me like I'm a fucking medieval peasant. Not an academic who is on your intellectual standing not a peer speak to me like a child one wide now we're talking <laughs> krug make bunga <laughs> they would beat you to death with a rock for sure you started saying that shit i mean my only knowledge of how people talked in the olden days is from the witch those motherfuckers were eloquent though Prithee, don't besmirch my word as your father and caretaker. Father, was it not you who took from mother's cup and absconded? Yay, twas me and abscond I did, and twould again if it meant bequeathing our family the bounty of the forest. Nowadays, it's like, what do you want for dinner? Uh, eh. Uh, uh, uh. 30 minutes later, chicken cacciatore. Where did we go wrong? Oh! The power line. Oh, man. Lose on all hair. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good joke. 
New shirt. Yeah, I didn't want to flex on you guys, but it's uh, Eddie Bauer. It's from the Kirkland Signature collection. Eddie Bauer made the first down jacket. Why do you know this? There's no shot Eddie Bauer made the first down jacket. It's going to be some motherfucker living in, like, Greenland or something like that. I want to go back in time and slap the shit out of whoever was the first person to uh, embroider symbols on jean pockets. Was. I didn't say kill them. I don't know why everyone's assuming you would go back in time and kill whoever did that. No. I would, I would simply slap them a couple of times and say, hey, don't do it. They don't need a little... On the, they don't need a flower on the pocket. You don't, have, don't waste your time. Mostly, I don't concern myself with fashion that much, by the way. People can wear whatever they want to wear. I will say, and we're probably like a little past this now, but you still see it time to time. When people started wearing um, jeans with pre-cut holes on the knees, that was one thing. I was like, okay, I get it. It's a style. It's, it's kind of trendy, I suppose. But then people started going fucking crazy, bro. They started wearing jeans where, like, the entire, like, front of the jean is gone. <laughs> it's just like you just get the back of the pant and then, like, a short's worth of fabric and then the rest is fucking exploded and stuff. And you're like, what are, what are we doing here? <laughs> it's a good look. That's fine. It's not for me. I would, I would, I would feel silly personally, but it's, if it looks good now, that's fine. I don't like the idea that people are like, in 10 years, you're going to look back on those photos and you're going to feel so silly. Yeah, but if you're fucking hot now, who cares, bro? Your nerd ass is not going to take like your prom photo wearing like a wool sport coat with Buddy Holly glasses. Be like, yeah, I went by myself, but at least I was wearing something timeless. Like, come on. A dare yourself to exist within the time in which you were born. That being said, you will not catch me wearing the jeans with no sleeves on them. But that they still have a cuff somehow. You see the, um, the Chinese worker who pissed in the Tsingtao vat? Yes, I did. I also am so embarrassed to say uh, the tweet that I saw said... Chinese worker pees in Tsingtao vat causes billions of dollars in damages. And then I got got by the most boomer joke of all time. <clears throat> Someone replied, billions in damages? Why? They should have just put a Heineken label on it. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, hi -yo. It's like the most obvious joke, but I was like, man, this guy is cooking. We go again. <clears throat> no point in getting mad. UPS is hiring. You were glancing. I was. Because I was going to talk about how Twitch is uh, deprecating watch parties. And it's the thing that always gets me, man. I... You can always rely on me to hail corporate. When there's a feature on this website that no one fucking uses, people slander it nonstop. Then they're like, we're gonna deprecate this feature and people are like, what? Bro, I was intending on using that. Come on, man. Yet another misstep in a series of missteps for the Twitch Corporation. Will Neff might be the only one. The, the fact that you can... They're all naming the same one. I'm not saying it should be deprecated. I think they should just make it not cost money to work. And then keep it around forever. That would make everybody happy. I'm just saying... People get fucking... Attached to the stuff that they never use. It strikes me as uh, disingenuous. I was a real watcher, bro. I did the watch parties... You haven't lived until you've done a sponsored watch party where um, I say, hey, I know this is a Canadian promotion, but most of my audience is American. Is that okay? They said, yeah, no problem. We don't mind. All of a sudden, 
start the fucking watch party, it turns out the shit is not licensed in the United States of America. <laughs> 6,300 people in chat just looking at a black screen, my ass trying to live react to three episodes of <laughs> British young adult spy fiction. I like watch parties. The only problem is, I mean, the problem is that it was too legal. I, you know how it, it sounds bad, but it's true. What I want out of watch parties is to watch whatever I want to watch, and everybody watching me can also watch it, and I won't get sued. But that's like too many perfect things coming to pass. Instead, there's like, oh no, like, yeah, Canadian, it's kind of crazy. Canadians can watch poor things on uh, Amazon Prime Video, but in Americans, it's only available on Hee Haw. And in England, it's on Olive TV. And in Poland, it's on BritBox for some reason. And you're like, oh. I do like, Prezo, I'm not calling you out for this, okay? I like that we still got real certified freaks on this website. I love the strat of streaming a real ass movie and the way that you avoid suspicion oh, is by just not putting yourself in any directory. <laughs> As if like there's someone at Twitch and their job is like, uh, hey, I sit in the streaming illegal movies directory all day, and as soon as a streamer slips up, I give him a 24-hour ban. It always strikes me as funny when people get uppity about the kind of content on Twitch, as if like, this website used to be for real gamers, bro. This website used to be where you could talk about like whatever you fucking wanted as long as Diablo was in the background. It's not about talking about whatever you fucking want with like a YouTube videos in the background. That should be like a different website, man. That should be like a different website called like, like Tubech or something like that. Twitch is supposed to be for the gamers. It's worse content. This would be better if we were, I didn't bake society for the record. I'm not saying this is how society should be, but like, wouldn't we all be having more fun if we were sitting here watching a funny ass video and eating popcorn. Instead, we gotta trick ourselves. Oh, I really hope NL fucking wins a difficult game about climbing while talking about, you know, why Sensodyne Green is the greatest toothpaste of all time or something. Do you like React content? I literally uh, don't watch anything except I see, I would say approximately on Twitter, I see eight TikToks a day, and every single one of them is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, I am not seeing shit on TikTok that's like, you know, stop drinking fluoride in your water. Stop putting iodine in your salt. If there was supposed to be iodine in your salt, there, there salt in your iodine, there would have been iodine in your salt placed there from the Almighty. Like, everything that I get is just surreal. It's not even sketches anymore. I don't even know how to describe the kind of comedy that shows up to me on TikTok. On TikTok via Twitter. That's why you find those cooked videos funny. Oh, what's your video that's fucking hilarious? Mm, Nancy Pelosi on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Be like, mm, I think I will sell my Boeing shares today. Hmm. Fuck you, man. It, Hey, 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 wouldn't this premise be funny? Whoa, what, what if, what, what, what if <laughs> Nancy's Boeing shares? I did see a more traditional comedy bit that got me though. You see the British guy arguing with himself in the pub? <laughs> what, mate? What, son? Who you call his son? <laughs> you, you mug. Who took the jam out of your donut? I ain't a son, you melt. I go by bruv geese pronouns. Oh, oh, mate, mate, I did not know. I'm so sorry. That's fine. Just don't do it again or I'll smash you up. <laughs> anyway, you having a beer or what? Nah, nah, not for me, mate. I don't think they do gluten-free beer here anyway, so... Oh, you're joking, aren't you? What kind of fucking two-bob establishment don't provide inclusive options for people with food intolerances? It's a fucking joke. 
He says, who you, who you calling son? I use geez, bruv pronouns now. He said, oh, sorry, mate. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean anything by it. Uh, it's okay. Just don't let it happen again or I'll fucking whack you. So anyways, you want a drink or what? Nah, mate. I'm trying to cut back. Plus, I don't even think they have any gluten-free beers or anything. It's a piece of piss, isn't it? What kind of a reputable establishment like this wouldn't have gluten-free options for the conservative drinker? Nah, mate, it's not a big deal. <laughs> Forget what else. It was good, though. I thought it was pretty good. Great accent. I don't. Maybe I've just been using the wrong part of England for my British accent. <laughs> Where else are you going to get mute? <laughs> you two cross it, Elsa. Oh, man. What the fuck? Holy shit, dude, what's the matter? What happened? What's going on? There's so much. Major League Bullies, Crayon. Running a stud special on this pimpy son. Two times, two pimpy. times, pimpy. Two times, pimpy. Two times, pimpy. Babe X, baby G. <laughs> baby G. Principe Vegeta. <laughs> Mew to X Elsa. You ever show Kate the 2X bully videos? First off, I don't know where it became videos. I've only seen the one video, okay? Secondly, I'm not afraid to link a video to my wife, but I try to keep it in the genre of maybe animal doing thing it's not supposed to. Some of the stuff that I find funny, there's like a, it needs a lot of explanation. Like, but, and then sometimes that explanation is like lost to me. Like, I don't really know why the, the 2X bully thing makes me laugh. But I know that because it makes me laugh, it is funny. Simple as. What would 2X Pimpy do? <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know. What, what does the 2X denote in the, in the dog advertisement? That denotes its level of inbreeding. Well, okay, what, what specifically does 2X mean then? Is it, can I ask something disgusting? Does that mean Pimpy's making... So Pimpy made a Pimpy Jr. And then Pimpy made a Pimpy the second that was Pimpy Cross Pimpy Jr.? I guess that would be Pimpy the third. Is Pimpy the third 2 x <laughs> Yes, regrettably you've got it. Oh no. <laughs> That's what... Shouldn't that be cheaper? <laughs> I think I'd pay less for that dog. <laughs> no disrespect. <laughs> Somebody needs to check on Pimpy, too, though. I mean, I guess he's chilling. Like, anyone ever ask him... ...how he's doing? He's like, bro, my kids look fucking just like me, dude. <laughs> hey, now, thoughts on the profit margins of DoorDash? Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pivot off of that and talk about something similar. I saw a tweet today that was like, people have forgotten about the fact that the niche occupied by DoorDash used to be held by frozen foods. We need to go back to having some frozen foods in our freezer at all times. Not a bad idea, but then I thought about another tweet that was like, and I think that this person has their fingers so much on the pulse of uh, society. I don't know who they are. I, I hate to not give them credit. But the tweet was like, the frozen pizza has to be like the biggest scam in the grocery business. Every time I'm at the store, I pick one up and say, hmm, maybe sometime this week I won't feel like cooking and I'll want a frozen pizza. Lo and behold, I get home from the grocery store, hmm, don't feel like cooking. <laughs> one of the most relatable tweets of all time. You delude yourself. Oh, this would be nice in a pinch. You know, maybe I'll get home late uh, one night or something like that and we can have a frozen pizza. You're eating that shit the day you bought it, without a doubt. You might buy two and then you've got a, you got one in your fridge for an emergency, but you one frozen pizza does not last. 
I'm really not like a, a dog person at all. Did you see that TikTok of uh, the owner trying to get her dog inside? But instead it just jumps into the swimming pool eight times? Buster, I'm really gonna... Buster! Come here, come here, come here you little shit! Be a good boy for once in your life. Are you done? Come here, come here. Buster, Buster Henry, Buster. All right. Come here, come here. Hey, hey, this was my towel. Don't you dare, Buster. Come here. Come here. Hey, are you ready to come in? Come on. Let's go, come on. Get out of the pool. Let's go, come on. Come on. Come on. Get over here. My mommy's right. Good drive. Come over here. No, sir. Buster, get over here now. I definitely get, uh... <laughs> I get dogs in that sense. Are you a cat guy? Not really, like, I, I love my cats, don't get me wrong. They're a part of the family. I'm kind of just like a, I think I'm a no pet guy. It's taken me a long time to come to that realization. But you have pets? Yeah, I mean, I like them. And we're locked in. You know, we have a responsibility. Would I re-up? I say it's up to my wife. Tomo 2X. Honestly, I feel like Tomo might already be like 2X or something like that. Ruka is, is 1X for sure. You can tell Ruka has like some serious genetic diversity because he's strong. <laughs> and like he seems well adapted, like he doesn't get sick with like mysterious illnesses very often and stuff like that. I can tell you hate to dance by your gameplay. Yeah. You don't want to know what I can tell by you as a result of your viewership. Unlike you, I'm going to show some social savvy and some manners, and I'm going to keep my mouth shut and keep my thoughts to myself, yeah. knowing that in a way that may actually bother you more. Because anything could be going on up there. <laughs> I mean, if I said something, that's one thing, you could fight back against it, but the cacophony of malevolence that could be cooking up in the cerebellum right now. I know everything about you. Nice glasses. Your mom pick them out for you? Or were they just the only frames they had for sale at the dollar store? Fuck you! Why are you swinging? Listen. You don't go into the Sistine Chapel and ask Michelangelo why he's doing shit, okay? You just gaze up at David and you marvel. Don't wish Samantha Seesaw on my worst enemy. Listen, the game, it's a, it's a great game. You and me might be the only people that actually have respect for this genre. Everybody else calls it streamer bait. They don't know the tradition of uh, foddy likes that exists in uh, addictinggames.com. I knew society was cooked, by the way. The second that um, Candy Stand Mini Golf was no longer the number one game on addictinggames.com. And instead it became Falling Girl. The girl in the bikini who falls through the bubbles. That is probably one of the serious, like, first harbingers that we as a society were going to spend too much time online. The gooners took over. <laughs> Nobody gave a shit about fucking helicopter flight anymore. Everyone was going crazy. Falling girl! I gotta go to addictinggames.com so I can play falling girl! This site used to be about gaming. It used to be about playing golf on a Lifesavers themed mini golf course where the hole was the peppermint one. 
Now it's all chicks in bikinis stealing my playership, falling on bubbles, their fucking legs are getting twisted up all around, their bones are all breaking and stuff. I mean, there's kids that use this website, bro. Everything turns to pornography given enough time. I don't think that's fucking true, to be honest with you. I think it's just like, you will find pornography everywhere. Yes. But does everything turn into it? No, absolutely not. You don't want to think it's true? No, it's because you guys are fucking gooners. <laughs> You, when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail, buddy. What is a gooner for real? Okay, Dan, nobody in your chat would probably tell you. They would try to protect you. A gooner is someone whose um, only hobby is excessive masturbation. And not just like trying to achieve climax as many times as they can throughout a day, but like trying to extend the length of the session as much as they can but it's and you're gonna say that's edging but it's not really edging it's kind of like um edging is like i'm gonna jo but i'm not gonna come gooning is like you you probably have to edge to goon it is a confusing kind of i guess it's a spectrum Gooners are like hypnotized. You know what? That's kind of the way I see it. Great, great addition there, Prezo. I'm going to speak on that for a second. Because I feel like edgers still have control over the masturbation. They're like, I am going to jerk off and I'm, then I'm going to almost come and then I'm going to stop. I'm driving the bus. I'm still in control. And then gooners have decided that they're like, I have let the hobby consume me. There's nothing to do but to goon. That's it. And if I come, whatever, I'll just keep beating it while it's soft anyway. So I, I find the edging, in a relative sense, I would say I, I find it more noble. And the gooning I find very distasteful because I think once you... I, I understand the temptation to surrender yourself to, um, you know, an ethos like that. That's probably the same reason people get sucked into cults. But I think you have to maintain some semblance of your own character, else find yourself totally dissolved into the gooning itself. Twitter is in kind of a crazy place, though. You'll see a tweet that's like Harrison Ford turns 90. If you scroll like eight tweets down, there'll just be a OnlyFans model that's like, he fucked me in the butt yesterday, and it's a video of her getting fucked in the butt. Like, they're not even, like, click this link anymore. You, I don't even mean this, I, I swear to you, it's not an anti-sex work thing. Is it really that hard out there to get attention for getting fucked that you don't even put up like a paywall or nothing anymore? Like, to compete, you just got to blast that shit out like junk mail? That's depressing, bro. That shit is, is making me sad. I thought there was, like, an art to it. It's like, you know, little revealing outfit, check out more here. The free set might have, like, a nip slip or something like that. If you want more, you got to put your credit card number in. Nowadays, there's, I mean, like, at least part of the chat GPT porn bots on Twitter are like, here's me getting fucked. Please send me some Bitcoin. <laughs> like it's the economics of that shit are fucking depressing, bro. <laughs> That's old school tech. Who called it crackhead shit? What does that even mean? <laughs> I'm serious. It seems like a hard fucking world out there, man. That's like what Let's Players had to do. <laughs> they had to be like... Hey, check it out. It's me, part six, Earthbound. And like as someone who, you know, was making Let's Plays, that shit was valueless, man. There was zero barrier to entry. I would have thought of you like, you know, shoving your shit in the camera. You'd, you'd be able to command a higher price, but I guess there's just so much out there. 
It's it, DL Guiga, bag me up. It's economics, right? There should be like some grapes of wrath shit. They should be like burning huge fucking warehouses full of pornography to make sure that there's only so much pornography left that it can actually command like a price where the people who make it can get paid a living wage. This guy has never tried to buy niche porn before. You got me there, Apollo. You know what is the real generational divide between like a 35 year old millennial and a 31 year old millennial? It's like the 35 year old millennial makes fun of the 31 year old millennial for having a fetish and the 31-year-old millennial makes fun of the 35-year-old millennial for being vanilla. It's something like that. Like, my ass can't believe... If you had told me that in, you know, fifth grade, I'd be made fun of for being gay, and then 20 years later, my ass would be here ma getting made fun of for being straight, I would be like, can you guys just fucking pick a side? <laughs> Come on, man! It doesn't make any fucking sense. Did you guys see the subreddit um, r slash cuckold psychology? I did see that on Twitter this weekend. Of course I didn't see it. You should take a look. What did you post on it? <laughs> so does anyone here know how to get past orange steak on Balatro checkered deck? Hey sport, play flushes. Hope this helps. Make sure dinner's on the table when we get back. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not, I'm not poo-pooing anybody's lifestyle choices, okay? Well, there is... Okay, so the post that went viral on Twitter was like, um, you know, my wife's boyfriend. <laughs> she got me good. It was like... Um, he keeps referring to me as like sport and champ. And uh, every time I talk to him, he treats me more like uh, I'm his son than I'm his friend. And I was like, I mean, a lot of people said this in the replies, but they're like, you're not his son or his friend. Like, I don't know where you got that idea. But um, then there were like, so that one felt like it might be a little bit made up. But then the, some of the other ones seemed very real. Like there was one that was like, are you guys allowed to help pick out the lingerie that your wife wears when she's on dates with her boyfriend? And then there were people that were like, oh no, we decided in like 2018 that I shouldn't be allowed to see my wife naked anymore. And I was like, Again, this was from the Twitter replies, but isn't this like a lifestyle that you get into because you're like, oh, I think that would be fun? That doesn't seem very fun at all, man. That just, that seems like a really fucked up existence. <laughs> I'm sorry, this conversation plus the girder is making me laugh. Well, I can't focus on the words and the, and the motion at the same time, man. Just work with me for a second here. I'm sure there's posts that are like, you know, just had a great weekend with my wife and my wife's boyfriend that reminded me of why I got into the lifestyle. Like, don't get me wrong, but like, the posts that I saw that were spotlighted were not like that. That's all I'm saying. I, Lord knows I can't start a war with another subreddit man <laughs> i did see that dude post on uh r slash laser hair removal and he was like i'm so hairy would laser hair even work for me and then it started an argument so bad that they had to lock and remove the thread how did you know that you knew it so fast Because they loved his hair. Exactly, man. That was like life affirming for me as someone who... I mean, you're gonna laugh. The dude in the picture, I swear it to you, I would not... I stand to gain nothing from this if it was a lie. I'm hairier on my torso than that dude. He's very hairy, don't get me wrong. 
Some of us are just built a little different. Okay, we go next time. Oh my god. <laughs> so, um, whichever one of you motherfuckers told me you have to go on the upswing, you're permabanned. Waste of my fucking life. I actually get so pissed off. That whole conversation. Sure, it's a mature conversation, okay? <laughs> I can't believe the noises, man. We were talking about grown-up stuff. People say things like, why are you talking about this? Why? Like, your ass better be Dame Maggie Smith. Celibate ass fucking austere madam living in the woods in England, okay? If your ass is like, I really wish you wouldn't talk about this, and then as soon as the stream's over, you're beaten off to some degenerate shit, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind, you disingenuous hypocrite. Mm, why is he talking about prophylactics? Fucking, I don't even know what website you would even type in to find the shit that you're so gooned up, you probably can't get off to the normal stuff anymore. You gotta open up an incognito tab, go to the dark web or something like that. Can I also ask why the most degenerate fuckers are the horniest? Or let me rephrase. Why are they pretending to be the horniest? Because if you jerk off a lot, it's self-regulating. You, you burn some testosterone off in the process and it makes you not feel the same compulsion to do it for a while. So if your ass is jerking off four times a day, why are you seeing a, a card in Balatro and going, I should call her. That shit is mental illness. Either that or, alternatively, you should be jerking off more. Because my first thought is that, like, if you're... Like, the degeneracy pipeline almost works the other way. If you haven't achieved release in, like, two weeks, then, like, a breeze is going to make you horny. That's not normal. You gotta, you gotta knock it out. In there what that light oh the red i don't want to self-report here but like the more you do it the more you can do it okay speak on that my experience with that is the opposite i would say if if it's if it's been a while i'm like there's i would go without food for it i would go without water for it i need it and then if it has happened, you know, in the last little bit, I'm like, it would be nice if it happened again. But we could also just go get some lunch. And then if it's happened like two times semi-recently, and it's like a third time, I'd be like, I'd rather just read my book, honestly. Yeah, you got to diversify your hobbies a little bit. <laughs> You just have low libido? Nope, I am, uh, I'm just a normal person. <laughs> I'm sorry to break the news to you. <laughs> I know that there's a, there's a risk to talking about stuff like this, because it makes you look like you're not a real fucker. It's the way of the world. Unfortunately, I'm compelled by an ancient curse to only tell the truth. You know in like music, where they're like, you know, we met at the club, Ah, we, we, our eyes locked, had a drink, I already knew it was on, took her home, we were making love all night. I'm like, fuck you, man. No, thank you. That's too fucking long. That's not desirable. Even as a younger man, not desirable. You still gotta sleep. There's a great middle ground where at some point you're, you, you know, it's kind of like, this is not advice. It was kind of like an album, right? Or a movie. A movie could be too fucking long. There's some great short films. There's some great TikToks. 
and then there's some movies that are four hours long and you're like, we've already seen this part. Do we really have to do this again? Like, get, get to the point. I already know, and listen, I'm not trying to besmirch anybody, okay? But whenever someone's like, you know, they're glamorizing the idea of doing it all night, I'm like, wait till you start day one on the job, motherfucker. You think it's so fucking easy. Talk to me in the damn morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks easy, right? You see Aaron Donald strap on his helmet. Pass rush Geno Smith. Geno Smith says, oh my God! Yeets the ball out of there. You don't see him in the damn ice bath after the game. You don't see him at the physiotherapist. You don't see him with the masseuse. Is this game still fun to play after watching every other streamer play it? You have made a classic... Uh, toddler mistake of thinking that your behavior also applies to me. We're running in different circles, my friend. I've been living in a fever dream for most of the past week with just the Tiny Desk concert version of 311's Down playing in my head. I have seen Dan play 12 minutes of this total. And that is it. That's all. One of the most insane things to me, sometimes you will um, tweet something and people will reply with like another streamer's meme. And I, I mean no disrespect to the streamer at all when I say this, regardless of which streamer it is. Do you know how cooked as an individual viewer you have to be at that point? And you might take it as a bad faith thing, you might be like, hey, he's mad because he's not using, I'm not using NL proprietary memes to respond to him. I'm like, no, motherfucker. You just need to diversify your fucking hobbies, bro. <laughs> You're making a joke about the shit that you watch to me, but I don't watch the shit that you watch. So how am I supposed to know what the fuck you're talking about? Who are you making the joke for? Eight views, zero likes. Just click the heart button, bro. You're not ready to be in the arena yet. Also, I'm getting cooked on TikTok. Two reasons. People said, oh, I just figured it out. I figured out who this guy sounds like. He sounds like Small Ant. Do I watch Northern Lion? I watch... Almost exclusively Northern Lion. Like, I think I've watched, on average, about two hours of Northern Lion content a day for the past five years. Oh my god, so true. Number two. Wow, why does he laugh just like Ludwig? Uh... What are you eating? Delicious chicken teriyaki with vegetable tempura and a side of salad. Why are you talking tofu? like Northern Lion? What do you mean I'm talking like Northern Lion? Why do you do that sometimes? Do you guys ever notice whoever Ludwig's like watching the most all of a sudden he starts sounding like them? You do that all the time. You like take on like Charlie's like cadence or whatever. DS Max said yes! You like take my laugh. <laughs> you stuck that one in there. <laughs> yeah, you sounded like you like you switched to Northern Lions so much. You switched. To what? I don't know. I just wanted to say <laughs> I was flashing out. Um. This? Oh, Ludwig and NL have done commentary a lot. So NL must uh, have picked it up from Ludwig. No, the fuck I didn't. I'm not saying they took it from me. I'm just saying my ass was here first, okay? So don't go, just cause they got 372 point E times 10 to the power of 37 subscribers. This is all original, baby. Laughing at my own jokes, catch me in the third grade. Last YouTube video I ever watched, 2007. It's called Not Today, Motherfucker. A science fiction clip. <laughs> oh, man. 1.5 thousand views from 15 years ago. This can't really, this can't be the OG, but still. <laughs> Okay, we, we, all, we missed the first 10%, so just chill out. Not today, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man.
That was the best camera that was available to purchase in 2006 that shot video. <laughs> it's the shit they, they shot the fucking Titanic on, bro. It's so millennial coded, man. <laughs> it really is. Not today, motherfucker! <laughs> oh, man. I watched it today in history class. Oh, Up next in two, that's the wrong number. What? Stop trying to get me to buy a freaking condo. There's a number. Psych! That's the wrong number! Oh, man. Man, what's next, man? What's next? What's next? I survived seven days in an abandoned city. I show speed in Peppa Pig. If I laugh, the video ends, number 29. I show speed, funniest talking Ben moments. Acid versus lava, testing liquids that melt everything. G-Wagon durability test, number one. Maybe there's a reason I don't watch too much YouTube. Where'd we go wrong with the internet? We re I genuinely, it's social media, in my opinion, and also this is uh, insane government overreach, but you uh, should have to be over the age of 28 to post on Twitter. That's the big one. You should never be able to be tricked into getting mad at like a 14-year-old's opinion. Zoomers made you? That's true. I, by the way, can I make fun of Zoomers for like the, the first genuine thing? The, I'm just poking fun. Welcome to the fucking arena, guys. We did it when we were millennials too. We're now getting articles about uh, Gen Z ruining stuff. Get ready, it doesn't stop. Whenever somebody writes an article that's like, Gen Z is ruining thing, the number one reply is always like, literally the youngest Gen Zs are in the 10th grade right now. Uh, the only thing they're ruining is their appetite eating their Dunkaroos right before lunchtime. <laughs> Everyone's like, so true, so true, so fucking true. They don't know what they're talking about, so fucking true. And then if anyone ever writes an article that's like, Gen Z uh, use iPad too much. My study, people are like, um, we're literally 26 year old chartered accountants. <laughs> If you need some help printing from PDF, go ahead and ask. Otherwise, bye-bye. And people are like, so fucking true. I, I, I miss that. I miss when my generation was like age 14 to age 28. And whenever you got criticized for anything, you could be like, actually, we're kids. And whenever you got criticized for being a kid, you'd be like, actually, like, I have gray chest hair. Nowadays, millennials are fucking, like, they're all 30 to fucking 48. What are we going to be? Actually, some of us have a slip disc in our spine. Like, now we're just getting cooked. We're all old. And fucking, apparently, 80% of us still fucking love Harry Potter, which I did not know. So enjoy it while it lasts, Gen Z. That's all I'm saying. All right, Kate is live. I'll send you over there. I'll see you tomorrow. Later. Have you seen Slackers? I don't think I can imagine any other streamer who might have seen it. Have I seen Slackers? What a ridiculous question. I love you, but I hate you. Which brings to mind how much I love you. We could have worked things out, you know. In my little room, in my little locked room I'm sorry that you had to settle for Dave The one-dimensional man He's filed under cocksucker in my little black book Sweetness can 
scratch your teeth, bittersweet, cacophony, and you hold the key, you hold the, you think I don't know every word from Slackers? Devin Sawa, Jason Schwartzman. Kind of insane this information occupies space in your brain. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that sometimes when I like I hear a song, usually like during a Peloton ride, I'll, I'll hear a song that I've literally not heard since like 1998, and I still know 80% of the words. I'm like, what are you doing in there? 